Hey guys, after a one week hiatus, welcome back to another new episode of Mossy Smart. Let's jump right into this week's questions. First question comes from Mike M from YouTube. I'm not getting Twilight Princess HD because I don't feel I need to get it. In your opinion, was it worth buying? Uh, in my opinion, yes. Uh, if I would give some advice, uh, I basically put it this way. If you are the type of gamer that likes to play a game through once and never touch it again after that, then I would say that the Twilight Princess HD remake is not for you. If you're a gamer that likes to occasionally revisit games that you've previously played and completed, then Twilight Princess is a game for you. Because it is basically still the original Twilight Princess with a few tweaks Updated graphics, uh, smoother, more better interface, and, and use it with the gamepad, with the inventory, but I mean it more or less is the same game with a few added features and tweaks. So, um, to me, I, I replay through Zelda games and a lot of video games more than once, uh, so it makes sense for somebody like me. And I, you know, I, I got, you know, full disclosure, I got a copy from uh, Nintendo, uh, but I've bought a second copy just so I can have one sealed with the amiibo and um, yeah. Next question comes from Austin Ellis from YouTube. Why hasn't Nintendo re remade the original NES Zelda title? Um, well, this is kind of complicated because they've attempted to do so before. Uh, first of all, they've ported the game. That's not really a remake, but uh, when Oracle of Seasons came out on the Game Boy Color, Oracle of Seasons was actually started as a remake of the original Legend of Zelda. Um, and there are a lot of references, basically, that connect the two games. In particular, if you look at like the Gnarled Root Dungeon, the first dungeon of the game, Look where it is in the overworld, look how you get to the dungeon, and look at the display of it. You cross a bridge from a right, it's inside of a tree, very resembling the original uh, Legend of Zelda. If you look at the dungeon map of the Gnarled Root dungeon, it is almost identical as the Eagle, which is the first dungeon of the Legend of Zelda. If you look at the dungeon boss of the, of the original Zelda with Oracle of Seasons, it is also Aquamentus. Take that a step further. Look at some of the other bosses in Oracle of Seasons. Aquamentus is the first boss. Dodongo. Gliok is in there. Goma is in there. Manhandla. All, uh, a lot of the original bosses. Combined ending has Ganon. One of the original bosses. Now, Ganon's in a lot of the games. And, uh, but the point being, Oracle of Seasons basically started as a remake of the original Legend of Zelda. Now... Once they started merging it with, like, they sort of did that combined game with Oracle of Ages, and there was again originally going to be a third Oracle game. It, it convoluted things and it drifted away from that. But the point is, there are a lot of resemblances from the original Legend of Zelda in Oracle of Seasons. So I would not call it a remake, but it, it's there's pieces there. Um, I think a straight remake of the original Zelda doesn't really work nowadays because of how simplistic that game was in comparison to the later games in the franchise. I, I do think Zelda Wii U could be a pseudo-remake of The Legend of Zelda, greatly expanding it. There's, you know, there's no real, there's not many characters, there's not many locations in the original Legend of Zelda, and that sort of thing would need to be more, you know, spaced out and, and you know, fleshed out, I should say. Next question comes from Jesse Norwood of YouTube. What do you think would happen if Zelda was ported to PCs? Um, I don't really know. <laughs> it's kind of an oddball question because, it, I mean, we've talked a bit, you know, Nintendo's talked loosely about expanding to the mobile market, and there are new games releasing for uh, iPhones and, and Androids, and uh, that's, I think, their first, you know, sticking their foot in the water just to to see, see what it's like. Um, I think there's a possibility we could eventually see 
Nintendo titles come out for other consoles or for other handhelds or for PC. Uh, what would I think would happen? I basically think that if it came to that, it wouldn't be anything unique about PC. It would be more uh, about Nintendo in particular, how they're doing as a company, what they view their hardware model going forward, and just you know spreading their software to other platforms could really help sales in the long term. So um, nothing really unique. I think this question could have been, you know, uh, what would happen if Nintendo ported their games to to Apple, to iPhones, or to Microsoft on the Xbox. So uh, same answer to all of those, basically. Next question comes from Mill Graham from YouTube. Can you guys just make a video walkthrough for A Link to the Past already? <laughs> um, I've sort of hinted at it before. Um, uh, video guys in general, um, they're not the primary focus right now, but but I can't say that I am uh, brainstorming and uh, messing around with the format for uh, In A Link to the Past walkthrough, and uh, that will be my next video. Most likely. And I shouldn't say I would, that would be. But um, uh, I have a few plans. I think I would like to do one eventually. So, yes. Next question comes from William Van, uh, Vanny Jean Hughes. Butchered that one a little bit. What's better, Wolf Link or Bunny Link? Gee, we're really uh, scratching the bottom of the barrel with this one. <laughs> um, well, Team Bunny Link is just sort of like a. Just seeing what happens to people in, in uh, when they transfer to the Dark World without the Moon Pearl, and sort of just like, you know, all the different characters and enemies got a transformation. You know, Link just transformed into a bunny. Um, Wolf Link, on the other hand, was a more, like, a central character in Twilight Princess. It was sort of the same idea, though. You get transferred to another realm, and you, you, know, you can't really keep your same form. Um, but, I mean, Wolf Link had its, its own characteristics, he had its own uh, fighting ability. Wolf Link sort of had his own personality. Wolf Link has sort of got his own uh, merchandise. There's, like, statues of Wolf Link. There's a Wolf Link amiibo. Wolf Link is, a, you know, a big focus in, uh, in the, in the Zelda world. Wolf Link and Midna were even playable in, in, um, Hyrule Warriors. Uh, so of course, Bunny Link is better because from, it's from Link to the Past. Anything from Link to the Past is immediately better than Twilight Princess. Alright, last question comes from Persian Monkey Studios from YouTube. Do you think Zelda U could have multiplayer functionality? Uh, yes, I think it could. Um, but I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant on whether I think Nintendo will really jump in with a with multiplayer or maybe co-op being a more a primary function of the game. I don't think we're going in that direction. Uh, I do think that uh, I mean you know Nintendo has experimented with multiplayer in several of its Zelda titles, not only with Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures, and more recently with uh, Triforce Heroes, uh, but also with uh, Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks. They both had multiplayer aspects uh, to the to their games. Uh, it was, and I think it was it was more of in a separate mode. And I think Zelda Wii U. Um, I think there's a good chance we see a separate multiplayer mode. Maybe it's something where it's like a series of mini games. Maybe it's some sort of uh, gauntlet of fighting bosses or enemies or something like that. Uh, that would be cool. And uh, I think that could work. I don't see them making it a making it a core feature in in Zelda Wii U. And uh, I don't really see that ever happening in the core Zelda series. I could be could be wrong, but uh, yeah, I think that maybe more so in uh, some of the spin-off games. I mean, Hyrule Warriors you could play two players, but uh, yeah. So it's something for it's like a. It's either going to be an add-on, some mini-game not related to the quest, or a spin-off. Something like that is how I see multiplayer uh, working in the Zelda franchise. All right, guys, thanks for the questions this week. Uh, I know I, I didn't record a mailbag last week because 
uh, Twilight Princess HD came out, and I've been working on the site walkthrough for uh, for the game. I'm moving along not as fast as I'd like, but uh, um, I'm hoping to return to weekly mailbags from this point forward. Uh, I would like to do a Twilight Princess mailbag. In fact, this mailbag I was hoping to do a Twilight Princess themed mailbag, um, but uh, we didn't exactly get too many Twilight Princess questions that I wanted to answer, so um, feel free to send in your Twilight Princess HD questions for uh, next week. And uh, as usual, you can post them in the comments below at Zelda Informer, in the comments at YouTube, you can email me at webmaster at zeldadungeon.net, or you can post them at the forums. So until next week, take care guys.